G'day, um, I thought I'd photograph some of the uh, flowering eucalypts here. These are these are peppermint gums. Um, yeah, this is their sort of natural environment, and it's the no, it's November the seventh, and they've been flowering for a few weeks. And um, we've had a really, a really wet spring um, to do with La Nina or El Nino. Um, we've had, yeah, just really good regular rain and this is the result. A very prolific flowering of these trees. Um, look at that one there. I hope, hope I can, hope I'm capturing that. It's, uh, it's flowering from head to head to toe, really, all over. And uh, that one's a bit light, but all of the ones there in the bush are flowering, fully flowering. Um, nearly all of them, anyway. Just it's just really prolific. There they are up there. There's the crowns of them covered in little yellowish white or cream coloured flowers. Here's a um, a blue gum, a Tas like yeah, Tasmanian blue gum and it's just nearly finished its um, change of state from juvenile to mature leaves. Yeah they just grow straight up those blue gums. And uh, they've got the um, lightish lightish coloured leaves. Look at look how big the leaves are. That's a lightish coloured leaves and then later on they go a more greenish colour. There's um there's a flowering grass tree. There or there's a grass tree that's flowering. I like this I like the scent of those things. That's it's an actual flower that thing. Or it's covered in tiny little flowers. It's sort of a stem that's covered in little flowers. Um, walking along, having a look at this tree. So I noticed this tree was really flowering um, profusely. So, yeah. There's a close up of the flowers. Yeah, and this, this tree, I'll get back away from it because I can't, it's too hard to see close up. So there it is there. Just covered in flowers, head to toe. I can hear, hear some black cockatoos over here. Um, just looking at this tree here on the ground, the, uh, there's its roots there and there's the tree. What happened here? This tree came down about four or five months ago during in a winter storm. The uh, high winds cut from the south and just blew all of the blue trees down this way. Anyway, the council removed the whole lot from over there from the lookout. But they just left this one. I've now got permission to take it as firewood, but what I've just realised is that the tree's still alive. Um, I'll explain why in a sec, but amazing, amazingly, um, this tree on the ground has started to flower. Look at that. The tree's flowering, and when it fell, it knocked down a tree a smaller tree or a, from, or a smaller branch or a trunk from there which fully died because it was snapped off because that trunk snapped off it just fully died so it's all of its leaves are now brown whereas this other trunk this well the other tree here um, didn't die so well um, it's kind of interesting really 
I'll just show you the size of this tree from over here. Okay, the tree's pretty big and anyway the council slashes this area once a year that slashes the area behind where I'm standing and because of where the trees landed it's preventing them from sl slashing this area so um, actually come to think of it that's incredible yeah it looks like it's sort of partially died but it's also flowering lot Look at that, it's sort of flowering and it's partially died, so... Um, probably branches were, were damaged when it hit the ground, but anyway, as you can see, a lot of this tree, which has been here for, I reckon, say, June, July, it blew down. Four or five months now, on the ground. I'll explain what I think's happened here. Um, we get most of our most of our winds come across from here from, from from the west which that's a westerly direction where that hill is and the trees um, develop strong a strong root system in that direction to hold them up because these peppermint gums don't have a don't have big roots like look at the extent of it on this side it's not big um, it's sort of, it's almost like part of the tree next to it. But anyway, I don't know if it is or not. Um, so anyway, the, there's a main kind of root system towards the west, toward into the direction of the prevailing winds. And we had a really high windstorm that did a lot of damage in Victoria. Lots of roofs off houses, and they were blacked out for a long time. Heaps of damage. Um, the same storm brought this down and it was from a southerly direction and so it was kind of the opposite almost um, probably because it's a valley it was almost the complete opposite of where the winds mostly come from and as a result the main root system is still buried and still drawing water and still keeping this tree alive so anyway I've got permission I've just been given permission to remove this so that'll be good exercise for me so um, what I might do is cut it there um, unfortunately that will kill the tree but then again I didn't I'm not really killing the tree because it was pretty much climate change that killed the tree because um, eventually it's going to die it's not going to survive a tree of this size is not going to survive lying horizontally um, there's another there's another good tree for firewood just there. It's been dead for oh, for ten years, and when they're like that upright, they really dry out. And uh, you could you could cut that down and use it for firewood straight away. Whereas a tree like this, I'm not going to be able to use this for firewood for till maybe the end of winter. It's November now, but I'll be lucky. To, I'll be lucky to have this dry by June, July next year, so it's really, it's no big deal for me really because I'm going to buy firewood. Yeah, um, this is the, the wood from the uh, tree that, the wind fell tree over the fence there and the, um, the tree's been completely converted to firewood. Actually, when you look over there, that's where the tree was. It was a fairly large tree, and yet this is how much firewood came out of it. And that is even using some pretty small pieces. Uh, some of those pieces down there, the branch is not really big, um, but even so, um, converted the whole converted the whole tree to firewood so took me, took me a couple of 
session, so I didn't do this in one go. And um, so yeah, so the whole project finished. Wind fell tree removed from the um, public pu public lookout area over there, thrown over the fence. Um, I've got a little bit of stuff to burn there, but the rest of this tree's down the bottom. This is only a fraction of my wood for the winter. Um, the rest of my wood's down there. There's a truckload, a tip truckload of timber down the bottom of my driveway, but they usually can't come up the driveway. Um, well, although it's only the second tip truck load of logs that I've bought, 700 Aussie dollars for it. Um, I bought two, but the other one hasn't been delivered yet. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. This is my exercise. This is my workout. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. These um. These things are in flower at the moment. Bottle brush type things. Glistamins or something, I'm not sure. My, my wife knows what, it, what all these things are. I don't know what, I can't remember the names of them. But uh, they look pretty nice. Look at that one there. They, um, they're almost in their, they're almost in their um, native, native area. Or they, yeah, I don't know. If they come from Tasmania, but they seem to be growing pretty well here. That's a Tasmanian blackwood just there. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. And a couple of days before Christmas, 2021, we've got the coronavirus in Tasmania at the moment. Uh, having to wear masks for the first time ever in, in shops and supermarkets. 